Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, bed crimers. As always, I wish you the best. To anyone new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. Let me just ask that after listening to or watching this video, if you learned something or enjoyed it, please do me a favor and smash that like button. Now let's dig in. Hi, my friends. How are you all doing? Wanted to share a little more information on the internal affairs investigation of an officer in the Moscow, Idaho case. We talked a little bit about this earlier today. To further clarify the situation, let me describe it as follows. The prosecution has basically had to let the defense know that an officer involved in the investigation is being investigated for some reason that is not being disclosed to the public. Because the details of this internal investigation are sealed, it's not clear who the officer involved is or how central to the Brian Koberger case they are. According to an article from CBS News, nationwide, some prosecutors and law enforcement agencies keep what are called Brady lists of officers who can be excluded from testimony or investigations for reasons that could deem them, meaning the officers, untrustworthy, meaning untrustworthy as witnesses. Idaho apparently keeps a statewide record database for police, corrections, and other law enforcement officers who have been decertified under the Brady Giglio rulings. Say that five times fast. Brady Giglio, Brady Giglio, Brady Giglio. Oh my word. Officers are decertified for infractions such as lying, code of ethics violations, inappropriate relationship, and misdemeanor and felony convictions. Since 2015, 396 officers have been placed on this list. And according to a report by the American College of Trial Lawyers, defense attorneys can appeal a guilty verdict if they weren't notified about this information in time. So let's say Brian Koberger is found guilty. If the prosecutor failed to notify the defense about this officer's internal affairs investigation, the defense could appeal the guilty verdict. Clearly, the prosecution isn't going to take that risk. In doing research for this video, I stumbled on an article from KTVB 7 News that discussed an internal police investigation from July of 2022. That investigation involved five then-current Caldwell, Idaho officers and one former officer. Caldwell, Idaho is 298 miles from Moscow, Idaho. So just to illustrate an example, of such an internal police investigation, I thought I'd share the details of this one. The officers that were being investigated were not accused of criminal conduct, but rather for violating the department's policies. The article said it was unclear if the five officers alleged violations were related. One of the alleged policy violations had to do with an accusation of use of excessive force. The officers under investigation were assigned to non-enforcement duties while the investigation was going on. So it's possible that this officer in the Moscow, Idaho case could have violated the department's code of ethics and policies, or it could be something else. In other news, News Nation is reporting that the leather sheath that was found at the crime scene on Maddie Mogan's bed was sent to an out-of-state startup lab for processing. Ashley Banfield said 
it's unclear why an out-of-state startup lab had to be used to process the sheath for DNA instead of the Idaho State Lab. She was questioning if the Idaho State Lab perhaps wasn't good enough to identify the trace DNA. Per Banfield's guest, this means that Koberger's defense attorneys will seize upon this situation to try and raise reasonable doubt about the DNA findings linking the leather sheath to the Koberger family. So what I basically heard Banfield and her guest saying is that anytime the prosecution has to send an item to an out-of-state lab because perhaps the Idaho State Lab wasn't able to detect the DNA or its results were maybe inconclusive, this opens the door to the defense attorneys being able to question how reliable the lab's results are. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time. Hey, smash that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel, and if you enjoy the work I do here, consider a membership.